Hello people of the internet and examiners who will be looking at this video for my evaluation today. This is the first evaluation of the A2 course and it, the title is In what way does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of your media products? Well, to, do, to find out about conventions and um, conventions and codes about original products. I had to do uh, market research into it. So I first thing what I did was I um, deconstructed uh, three music videos, all of different genres, but mainly of the ones associated with my genre. So my genre is punk rock and heavy metal. Well, not heavy metal, punk rock and rock genre. So I looked at bands such as Green Day. And and the Foo Fighters, but I also looked at artists such as Katy Perry and Lady Gaga, because I thought it'd be good to have um, uh, f uh, research into not just the genres within this, within my chosen genre, but other genres as they're all music videos. So I'd be able to get the feel of what different music videos are like. So the different camera angles, the narrative, is there thought beats, is there uh, lip syncing, is there a narrative based on the lyrics of the of the um don't know that's any better? Yeah it's better hey you can see me now that's good. Anyway, the narrative is based on the lyrics of the video or the the narrative is completely different to the video. But that all comes into Andrew Goodwin's theory. But anyway um, I feel that I used conventions of re real media products as I used a strong narrative throughout my video and I used lip syncing, I used a star image so in my video I had a star image as the lead singer of the band but he also was the he also was the um, the main role of the video as well is there this much there? No, it's alright. It's good! And anyway, it was the main it was the main thing of the video of uh, the narrative because we wanted the, the video to focus on him and his past. So yeah, we used convention conventions of music videos and we followed Goodwin's theory as um having the videos the the lyrics in um in sync with the with the visuals of the of the of the lead singer. Um, we also had had um, uh, the beats, the thought beats. So when the uh, the when on the, the beat of the song, the camera changed changed different different angles and the editing changed. So to go in line with the song. Um, I'll, in a, in a way to get uh, or feedback and research in of my chosen genre. We did a pitch to our class, so we pitched our, our our idea to our class to get feedback on what they think was good and what they was bad. This was very useful as it was also feedback which we ourselves wouldn't be able to give ourselves because it's, it's good to have audience feedback uh, so we don't just go with ideas of just our own opinions because everyone likes different things. That it was very useful as they helped, as they gave us some extra ideas and what else we could do, to as we chose our song, which was "Waking Up September Ends" by Green Day. Um, in a way, I feel that I was directly influenced by one specific product, as we did the song. Uh, as we just did the song, I was highly influenced by the video for that song itself. I w we weren't trying to recreate the video, but we took elements from that video, from the narrative, so there's the army scenes, and the story of how he goes into the army and how what happens in the end. We took that that um, that element of the video, but I feel that oh, as well as the live band scenes, I feel that we were highly influenced, but we weren't trying to copy the video, if that's what makes sense. Um, but then we also um uh developed our own product as uh the we wanted to have the the narrative begin from start to end but we also wanted to keep the audience on edge and ma make sure they question the video as well 
if that makes if that makes any sense. Um, I feel that the final product of the video, and and Saluta asks, I think that they challenge other, um, other other videos on the market, and it's unique. It's not just promoting the band. It is selling a story which is rather unusual in music videos, as it's showing a true friendship between. Um, T between two two army two army people, but it also shows a link between each other and how the their their friendship was ruined and destroyed by one man. And I feel that that this is this is challenging other narratives of other music videos because it's almost like we are the the lyrics are actually being amplified within the within the visuals of the video. Um I feel that the, the the transitions which I included in the in the video were very effective as we were I was able to show the connection between the following scenes and I only used a transition really where I was going to um change from one part of the narrative to the next part. So at the start when we when I, I used one to show the connection between the lead singer and the lead role of the narrative so that the audience were able to make that connection and be like, oh, he's the same guy! Oh, wow, that's cool! And at first the, it was a bit difficult to get the narrative across to the audience as has been as the project wasn't finished, there was many questions about what's going on. Are they just messing around in the woods? Are they, what are they doing? Is this is it a gay relationship? Which is what uh, was one of the most common questions, which came up a lot of the time, even when it's finished. And that's what not what we were trying to promote. So, if I was going to change it, I may adjust the narrative a slight bit. There's nothing wrong with gay relationships. I'm completely fine with them, but it's not what the um, what we were trying to, sh what the preferred reading was in the video. Um, we planned mise en scène very, very well. I thought, because to get the location for the band scenes, we had to um, figure out where we we wanted a, a barn to film in in the first place. So we had to figure out where we could film it, and we had to plan it. We wanted it at night time, so it'd be dark lighting, and only we didn't want any natural light coming in through the windows or anything. So we had to wait till night. So it's all dark, and what we had is uh, is is our own lighting, and we also wanted a woods foot to be filmed in, as well as a cornfield, and we wanted a main tree so the actor can go up on. So, in a way, our planning was very was very effective, and if we didn't plan the mise en scène out well, I don't think the video would be that great as a final product. Um. In the way of a sound, we didn't really use any other sound except for the music track, except for the start, where we included diegetic sound, which was filmed when, which was caught in the filming, when we were walking through the field. I didn't really do anything else with the sound, as I didn't want to, because I feel like I would have messed with the flow of the, of the, of the video. Um, so as I, as I went on, it was just mainly the the soundtrack of the of the video which is played throughout, and so this way I wasn't really planning to, to challenge the the genre um, stereotype of of and genre of the of the genre because normally it is normally just the song playing in the background. So I wasn't really looking to challenge it. But other than that, I also wanted to challenge a stereotypical band, as normally it's a three-way male band in in a rock band. So it's a male guitarist, drummer, and bassist. But in this one, we wanted to to subvert the genre in a way. So we had a female drummer and two main two male um, um, guitarists. The female drummer um, was actually worked really well, as it shows that we were trying to challenge the genre. And more, and actually, when people, when the audience watch it, females can be more 
uh, attracted to watch it because then they get a leak and like, oh, there's a female there. So this is film isn't, isn't bad. It's gonna be it should, it'll be appealing to us as well. So that way, it was it was really useful. Um, and that's yeah, yeah, that's it. But then actually going on to my ancillary tasks, I feel that I have made a very successful digipack and. I feel that it, it promotes the band really well and it links into the genre really well as there's not many there's not many um uh digipacks out there for relevant artists which focus on each member of the band and as I was trying to promote the band and make them look big I thought it'd be a good idea to have a, a single image of sorry I'm bourbon a single image of each artist on on on, on every page but as I was trying to promote a star image, I thought I'd have Ollie, the lead singer, on the front page, focused on him, as well as the poster. And I, f and I feel this is very... I feel like this does challenge the challenge the conventions of actual products, because a lot of re relative... a lot of uh, products in the same genre, such as posters or digipacks, they are very animative, and they're, they're very creative. But they don't focus on the band. They don't focus on the band members, which is what I was aiming to. It was aiming to challenge, and I feel I've done that uh, very successfully as well. I also have included all the all the conventions of a post and digipack, such as date, of uh, release, um, title of the band, title of the album, all the relevant information which the audience need to know and where they can buy it, how much it is, the record label. I thought I've included all of them very well. So yeah, I feel that I have challenged forms and co and conventions of real media products, but I also think I also feel that I have uh, followed them as well. So I haven't tried to cheat the coaching conventions. I haven't gone into another genre with with, with my intentions, but I feel that I have done it very successfully. But yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye. I'm back. And now I'm going, I'm sorry. Hmm.